Hello, and thanks for joining us for another Molly Motorsports Piston Tech presentation. Today we'll be illustrating another important part of the pre-assembly process as we look into the concept and factors affecting piston to valve clearance. To begin, we have a piston mocked up in our short block. We already have our cam installed, and you'll notice we're using a degree wheel uh, to help illustrate the process today, but it's not mandatory. One note that we should add related to cam timing is that it's not absolutely critical that you have it installed as you intend to run it. Obviously, the closer the better, but as long as you know where the cam is at while you're making your measurements, you'll be able to make compensations or estimates for how the changes you make to the cam down the road will affect your P to V clearance. The lift will typically only change about seven to eight thousandths of an inch per degree that you adjust the cam, which by itself isn't much, but if you have an assembly that's marginally tight or needs extra clearance, if you have to advance or retard the cam, say four degrees, that extra 30 thousandths lift may be enough to push you into a situation that becomes critical. The actual or target values for clearance will vary based on a number of factors. Everything from the type of engine, the components you're building it with, the intended usage of the engine, and even each individual engine builder's uh, personal preference. But regardless of the absolute numbers, one common factor that you'll typically see is there's generally more clearance built into the exhaust side or required on the exhaust side. And there's two factors at play for that. One, components on the exhaust side will always see more heat, so we're compensating for expansion. Number two, if you consider the point where the intake valve is closest to the piston, it usually occurs at a point 10 to 15 degrees after top dead center. At this point, the intake valve is just starting to open, but the piston is beginning to accelerate away from top dead center and away from the valve. So if there's any unforeseen circumstances that occur, it's very unlikely that the clearance is going to be reduced in this case. On the exhaust side, the point of minimum contact is usually at 10 to 15 degrees before top dead center. Here, the exhaust valve is on its closing ramp and the piston is approaching top dead center or chasing the valve up the bore. In this case, if there's any delay in the closing of that valve, whether as a result of valve float, uh, stretch in a timing chain, or just the normal deflection in the valve train components, the, increases, the clearance is going to be reduced and the potential for clash is, is greatly increased. So to compensate for this, we add more initial clearance on the exhaust side than we'll typically see on the intake. That's going to wrap us up for part one of this topic, but in the next segment, we'll be showing more detail on two of the various methods used for measuring the actual clearance. We hope you'll join us for that, and thanks for watching. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and YouTube for more informative videos.